Hi, I just wanted to show you, uh, this is the paint, or actually www.getpaint.net website. And a couple of things here, download, download, okay. You remember these, if you see this little triangle on its side, little blue triangle, those are ads. Same thing over here. These are ads. When you want to download this program, you want to, where it says, get it now, free download, paint.net, version 3.5.11. And that's what you want to click on. It's a clean and safe download, so you don't have to worry about downloading any any nasties at all. And there's a little description of it, etc. Okay, let's uh, close that out. And once you open it, it's going to look like this. You're going to have the history palette over here on the uh, right, telling you have a new image open. You have the tools palette here on the left. And uh, we're going to make some changes. The first thing you're going to want to do is close the history palette. Come up here to the main menu at the top. Click on Window. And you want the Layers palette to show. And if you're actually working and working with photographs, we're just going to rotate and crop. You also want to have the Colors palette show. Okay, because you might want to pick colors for something. Okay. So you want to set it up so it looks like this. Right now, because we're just rotating and cropping, we don't need the colors palette. But we do need the layers palette. Once it's open, you can resize it. I usually like my layers palette to be a little big. Now, we're not drawing or anything here, so we're actually going to open an image. Notice, like I said, we have the main menu across the top. And we have our little utilities and icons down here for new, open, save, print, cut copy, paste, and this is important right here. We'll be looking at this in a minute. Crop to selection. You have your window. This is how you can zoom if you want to get closer or not. Or you can just use the uh, zoom in and zoom out. Okay, and units. Now I have my units in inches and this, that, and the other. Here's some other things here. This is Working with the tool brush, you get to make some changes. You get to do the size, and you get to pick out, you know, how you want the brush to paint, and etc. But we don't need that. We're not going to work with the brush actually right now. So let's open a picture. Click on File. Click on Open. And I have a duck here that I downloaded from FreePhoto.com that I use for a lot of things. And you notice it comes up as the background layer on your Layers palette. So you can see what you're working on. You also get a little thumbnail of it up here in the upper right corner. When you put your cursor on the thumbnail, the red X comes up here. That's how you close this file. If you want to, if you want to finish, if you've finished working on this photo and you want to work on another one, you just click this X and it goes away. Actually, I don't know what that does. Oh, it just names it. Okay. Now. We've got our file open. We want to rotate it. It's very, very easy. Come up here to Image, whoops, excuse me, Layer, Rotate and Zoom, and you're going to have this little dialog open. Oops, I'm sorry. It tells you don't touch anything else. And you roll or rotate it. You can pan. You can zoom. How does the pan and zoom work? I can zoom in. Whoops, and I can't see the duck's head. Then I just use the little pan. I click and grab it. And ta-da, there we go. And then, of course, I don't really want my deck to look like that, so then I can reset them by clicking Reset. That's back to normal. But we're, we're concerned here with the roll and rotate. See? You can grab this little thing in the middle and go backwards. You can go forwards. Whoa, hi, duck. You can go off to the right. You can turn it off to the left. I mean, this this program does some really cool things, and that's one of them. Let's reset it. You want to just kind of change the angle. So you're going to grab this bar on the side and pull it down to make it go to the right. Pull it up to make the top go to the left. Notice when you do that you expose some of this checkerboard. The checkerboard means it's transparent. You're like a piece of glass. Because each photo is on a what's called a canvas that's the same size as the photo. And you haven't changed the canvas size or whatever. So uh, it stays the same size. 
Now, I have never done this. Let's see if it does the image canvas size. There we go. Now, we can do it by percentage. Let's increase the canvas size by, oops, not one. Let's make it 120% and click OK. There we go. Of course, whoops, I still have the brush there. By the way, here's undo, which is my favorite. And I don't particularly like the canvas size like that. Let's see if we can do it again. Canvas size. Print size. Oh, here we go. That's why I changed it weird. Okay. Come down here to the anchor and put the anchor in the middle. Then do it by percentage. And let's do 120%. Make it bigger. Ta-da. There we go. Now, when we go to our layers rotate and zoom and we grab the little bar and we change it you can see that there's still some white across there if you don't want it to be transparent now I prefer transparency and I'll show you why in just a second so let's uh, undo our canvas size change let's go back to layers rotate and zoom and let's just say I need to change, I'm going to change it like this. I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay. Now, you can also come down here where it says angle. Let's say it says 607. I think, oh, that's a little bit too much. But, you know, I don't have a steady hand on this, so I can't get it exact. Well, in that case, I can just click and highlight this, and I can change it to, let's change it to minus 3.75. Okay. And I'm going to press enter. And it's going to change it to that. Oops. There we go. Oops. Now it's back to what it was. Okay. And we're going to write in 3.75. Okay. Now, there's a little thing here you can check right here at the at the lower left called preserve tiling. And if you check mark it. Pocket didn't work that time. Come on. There we go. You check mark it, it kind of fills in the edges that it can. Now see it can't go past the top or the bottom. So it is kind of if you only move your your if you rotate your picture just a little bit, here let me show you. Fuck. Well, my goodness. Oh I know why I pressed enter. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's go back. Let's open our duck again. Don't save it. But watch. File. Open. Recent. Oops. There's my duck. Okay. Let's try it again. Layers. Rotate. Zoom. And let's uh, reset it. If I just move it a little bit like that. And then I click on Preserve Background. See it fills it in. So you don't have any transparent parts. But if I move it a lot, whoops, I'm sorry, I still have it click. If I move it a lot, then it doesn't. Well, what happens if you move it a lot? You click on preserve background. Oh, there it goes. Now it's working. But it doesn't look right. You can kind of see up here where the block kind of goes downhill and stuff. And let's say I don't want it to do that. Well, then you have to crop it. And cropping is not that hard. You First of all, you want to come to your toolbar. Here it is. You want to use the tool in the upper left corner called the Rectangular Select Tool. And you just draw, to draw a rectangle. Now, the thing about your rectangle is you don't want any, you don't want it to catch, like here in this corner, up here in the upper right, it's got some of the transparent area. So we have two move tools, the move selected pixels and the move selection. We want move selection, the second one down. And then you'll notice when I click on it, you get these little boxes in the corners and boxes along the sides. These are called handles. And I can move this one in. And this one looks okay. So in other words, if it was way down here at the bottom and part of it was transparent, I can move it up. And so we can use that to move it in. Now, this is where our little icon up here in the menu bar, Crop to Selection, or you can go to, excuse me, Image Crop to Selection. It happens in two places, Image Crop to Selection, 
or just use up here right next to paste and right before deselect is crop to selection just click on it and there's your newly cropped your newly rotated and newly cropped picture now you want to save it come up here to file save as make sure you know where it's being saved and if you need to you know pick another spot use the libraries whatever you have to do important thing is after you've edited a picture give it give it a slightly different name now I have a system this is the name of the file duck web and it's got a capital E capital D capital ed after it for in my system that means edited that tells me I've already edited that photo so if I save the photo I've just edited in paint.net with the same name it will destroy my original edited photo so right at the end of ED here I'm just going to type in a 2 this is my second one now what file type do you save as if you want to let's say you've been working on a photo and you've got two or three layers here and you have to go run an errand or you have to eat dinner or you have to go out with a friend to a movie whatever and you want to close out your computer close the program but you want to come back and do work on it later then you want to save it as the very first file type the paint.net file that when you open a paint.net file it opens it just like you left it when you saved it if you want to print it you want a JPEG if you have some parts of a, a photo that you've edited that are transparent and you want them to stay transparent let's say you've cut something out and you want to put it in another photo later on so you need to be transparent around it save it as a GIF, a GIF file. If you want to save layers in a file but you don't want to save it as a paint.net, save it as a PNG file. Now there are a couple of other ones that general bitmap and stuff you don't need to know about those. But if you want to print it just save it as a JPEG and click on save and then your photograph is saved. I'm not going to save this one. I need to go back you know, if you need to go back, don't forget you can always undo. Uh, Paint.net's a really nice little program for beginners. It's set up kind of like Photoshop and PaintShop Pro and Photoshop Elements and GIMP and some of the really bigger, more complicated programs. So you'll be used to having a toolbar. You'll be used to having a layers panel. You'll be used to having uh, the two different sets here the main menu across the top and the little icons underneath it and so you'll be all used to that and when you've done everything you can with paint.net then you can always switch off and, and use one of the bigger programs well I hope uh, this has been helpful for you